Today we're going to also install a Team Z Motorsports 850 cert chrome molly roll cage and a Fox Body Coupe Mustang. The cage comes pre-labeled, pre-notched. It was notched in a jig. Everything fits. It is just a holding weld. Um, we've taken a lot of time to go through different configurations. This configuration is for a car that has been mini-tubbed and it has the rear triangulation bars. With this cage kit, we took the time to label and pre-notch every bar. This is a passenger torque box bar. It's clearly labeled. It's notched to fit onto the roll cage and to the floor, to the upper torque box. Um, every bar that we have is clearly labeled and it's already pre-notched in our jig. We'll show you pictures of our jig later in the film, but my guys are gonna install this and show you exactly how easy it is to install one of these cages. We're gonna start the install of this cage kit. We've already pre-installed the main hoop because everything is based off of it. This car already has the Team Z subframe connectors installed in it. The main hoops will come already pre-cut for the height, whether you have subframe connectors or not. And it'll be clearly labeled because there is a three degree lean back. It'll be labeled front and rear. And of course the front of the car is the front of the car. So you'll have a three degree lean back and the cut is already made into the bottom of the main hoop so that all you have to do is either set it on top of your six by six plate or set it on top of your subframe connector. We already have the main hoop tacked in place right now. We're gonna attempt to put in the passenger side A pillar bar. It is marked passenger side, driver side, so you know which one goes where. Um, so it's pretty simple, it's already pre-notched, it should just slide right in place. Okay, we have the eight pillar bar tacked in just on the top right now. You want the top of the bar parallel and a, the notch should line up perfectly without any gaps. You want to leave the bottom part untacked so when you put the back bar in, you can move the main hoop back and forth. That gives you a little leeway when you're putting the back bars in to go to the trunk to slide right in. So top of it's tacked in, bottom of it's not, should fit in no problem. Okay, now we're gonna install the rear trunk bars. These rear trunk bars are for mini tub cars only. Again, they are labeled, so you know if it's passenger side or driver side, pretty cut and dry. Again, we left the front A-pillar bar loose on the bottom so that we could slide this in and out very easily. We're getting ready to attack the rear bars. You want to measure in between both bars exactly 26 inches. When it's 26 inches at the back, when you go to do the rear triangulation bars at the top, they'll end up being 26 inches so that you know that everything's parallel. So we are going, we got one side tacked in right now. We're about to attack in the other side. Okay, we have this driver side bar tacked in right now. If you look here, if you measure to this face of the bar to here, I made a mark here with a silver sharpie. That's your 26 inch mark. Slide this bar over on that mark, tack it in place. Your triangulation bars up top should be should set in place exactly where they're supposed to be with no problem. Okay, we talked about the measurements here. I got a line marked right here with a silver sharpie. You want the edge of the, the inside of this bar right on that line so that you're right at 26 inches. When you're 26 inches back here, everything will be squared through the front half of the cage. So when you put your triangulation bars in, that they slide right in and everything sets right into place.
here we got the factory seat belt tab. This might come into interference with your rocker bar. So you might just have to grind down the edge a little bit. We're gonna do that right now so that it slides down into place. But other than that, um, should be all set. Now we got the main hoop, A pillar, and back bars in. We can go ahead and weld in the bottom of the main hoop completely so that we can put our rocker bars in next. Once we weld in the bottom of the main hoop, we can slide our rocker bars in. We left this not tacked in so that if we have to adjust it for the rocker bar, we can. As you can see, it slid right into place with no problem. So we can go ahead and weld in the bottom of the rock or the a pillar bar and then we can drop the rocker bar in and get that tacked in okay we have the main hoop the a pillars and the back bars all tacked in right now we're about to put the rocker bar in would be the next step the reason why we had you leave the front untacked is just in case you need to tighten this gap up or whatnot depending on certain cars might be different um, but as you can see, it slid right into place. It is perfect fit right now. The car that we're working on right now is leveled out. So what we do is we put our digital level on here and we're gonna bring this to zero. We got everything tacked in, rocker bars, a pillar bars, main hoop, back bars. Now we're gonna head to the front of the car with the windshield bar. Um, it's already pre-bent, notched, everything. Should just slide right up into place without a problem. Two, one. And when you slide it up in there, the bend is gonna go out towards the windshield and then it's notched. You can see it's notched more on the top side, that'll slide up towards the top. Slide in one side. And slide up the other. She's in place. Perfectly notched. You can see no gaps at all. Okay, we're all set with the windshield bar. Now we're gonna put the dash bar in. You'll be able to slide this dash bar in with the steering column still in place. You're gonna to have to tap it in with a hammer a little bit, um, but it should slide right into place, no problem. It is offset a little bit on the bottom notch. That's gonna to go towards the floor. And that should be about it. All right, we got the dash bar in here. Make sure it's all leveled out. And then we can uh, tack her in place. She's gonna set just above the steering column. And that way your dash will be able to bolt in and out, no problem. Okay, we have the seat back bar now. We're gonna pop this in place. Same thing, it's notched more on the bottom, it's offset notch, so the part that's notched more is going to go towards the floor. Okay, now we have our kicker bar that's going from our main hoop down to our subframe connectors. The bar is going to land right in the center of our outrigger for the subframe connectors. And then it'll set just about a half inch below our seat back bar, that way you have enough room to weld both bars. 
Okay, we're moving on to our door bars now. Our door bar is going to set just above your seat back bar. And it's, you have two options with door bars. If you have factory door panels, it's going to have a bend in it. If you have aftermarket door panels, like a race car door panel, then it'll be a straight bar. If you have factory door panels, the bend is going to be farther towards the floor than the top. So the distance between the bend is going to be longer on the top half of the bar. Okay, we're on to the last part of our cage kit now. <clears throat> we got our triangulation bars that's going to tie the back bars into the main hoop. You want to put your center bar in first, which should slide in no problem, seeing as how you put the back bars in at 26 inches like I stated earlier. Zero it out so that it's level. You're going to tack that in place. And then your side bars can go in. Slide right up in place so that it looks like it's a continuous bar wrap around. And on this bar, what we... Okay, now we have our side bar in place. You want this to line up with the top of your door bar. You don't want it to be down here or up too high. It's gonna look like it continues as one bar. That'll line the back side up exactly in line with that center bar, which is probably about maybe an inch away from the package tray. It's hard to tell from the, from the picture, but it's about an inch up from the package tray. That way you can get your fa factory package tray back in there. Okay, we're just gonna recap a little bit here on our cage kit. We started obviously with the main hoop, tack that in place. Now mind you, we only tacked the bars in so we could have adjustability. Then we went to our A-pillar bars, tack the top in, left the bottom loose. That way we could move the hoop back and forth so we could put our back bars in. Tack the back bars in and then set our rocker bars in and then welded the bottoms of the A-pillar and the main hoop bars before we set that in. Um, everything else, you know, just kind of, you got to read the labels on everything. Make sure, you know, that you kind of go in the same order that I showed you. It's going to make life a lot easier. Everything is pre-notched and fits like a glove. You guys should have no problem fitting anything in here. Just to recap with you guys, this is an all day project and that's not something you're gonna wanna do by yourself. You're gonna wanna have at least another set of hands with you. Um, you're obviously gonna have a TIG welder, your basic cutting and grinding tools, just if you have to touch anything up on the car side or the bar side, if anything changes because your car's been in an accident or whatnot, things have been moved around differently, you have a different set of subframe connectors and whatnot. Um, so there might ha you might have to touch things up a little bit. So you're going to need your basic tools. You're pretty much going to want somebody that has some welding experience to weld this up because you don't want just anyone welding up a, this pretty of a cage. It's all bent up. It fits in the car nice. You want it, the welds to be nice on it too. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely an all-day deal, and it's not something you want to tackle on your own.